How do professionals make straight circular saw cuts on a job site without using a guide? I get asked this question a lot. People see me cutting freehand on the show and they say, how do you do that? Obviously, I could just write this off by saying, oh, it just takes a ton of practice. You have to do it thousands of times. And to some degree, I guess that's true. But that doesn't help or encourage the average DIYer who's just now getting comfortable with tools. And on top of that, I do think that there are some tips and tricks that make a huge difference when learning to cut freehand. Some of them are mistakes to avoid, and others are technical conundrums that have to be addressed. So in this video, I'm going to explain in depth how to cut freehand. I'm going to break it down into minute detail and demonstrate a couple different types of cuts. But before we get started, I have to remind you, using a circular saw is dangerous. They're powerful tools with very sharp blades. Consequences here are fast and unforgiving. You're using one at your own risk, and this is just an informational video. So please, follow all safety instructions for your saw. Don't use it unsupervised if you're not experienced, and never use it against manufacturer guidelines. I did a video on 11 circular saw mistakes that I think you should watch if you're new to the saw. But ultimately, you're responsible for your own safety, so please proceed with caution. All right, warning has been delivered. Here are some tips on how to cut straight freehand with a circular saw. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. Okay, first thing to be addressed here. I'm using a corded Sidewinder Makita with a seven and a quarter inch blade. This saw has the blade to the right. Some people use worm drive saws like my skill saw, which typically have the blade to the left. This makes how you view the cut line different for each saw. And this is very important because as we'll discuss, seeing the cut line is a huge part of cutting straight. I'll do a video later on the differences between these two tools. It's a raging debate in construction. But for today, I'm focusing on my right blade sidewinder because it's the one I prefer. You can adapt a lot of these techniques though to other saws without too much difficulty. Also, I'm gonna focus on cutting wider boards because that's where we do a lot of our freehand cutting. I already did a video on using a speed square as a guide to cut narrow boards, and that's something I think DIYers should employ as much as possible. But today, you're just gonna see wider boards. The other thing to keep in mind is that cutting freehand takes a lot of stability. I'm cutting on my work table, and as always, I want my boards propped up to keep the saw from cutting the tabletop. I'm using ripped down two by fours, about three feet long. I lay them down on their milled faces so they're all flat and level at one and a half inches. You don't want high spots. And if you're cutting a really big sheet, you probably wanna just go ahead and move down to the floor. This way you stand on your board as you cut it, and you're not trying to reach across a four foot board. You can then move narrower pieces back up to the table afterwards. And the last thing to consider for stability is how far apart your support blocks are placed. I tend to use three or four for longer boards. I cluster two of them on either side of my cut line. Then outer ones will catch or hold extended ends if I think that the cut needs it. Again, the key to safety is nothing moving unexpectedly. You want support for the saw and support for both sides of the cut. So setup is basically taken care of. The next most important thing is establishing a cut line. You cannot cut freehand effectively without a line to follow. I use metal straight edges to draw mine. This is basically just a three foot steel ruler. You can also use this to guide a cut, but that's a topic for another video. To use it here, I first plot two marks by pulling from a square end of the board. This gives me a high and low reference point at either end of the cut. Then I simply use the straight edge to connect the two. Also, a sharp pencil is extremely important. A fine line makes for a finer cut. Here, you can see that I've extended my cut line through my crow's foot marks. This line is perfectly straight and I know it's where I want it. Now we come to the discussion of the kerf. Which side of the line do you want to cut on? I did one of my most important videos on this subject, so please watch that if you're confused. But for clean cuts, I usually want the cut line to be on the right side of my saw blade. I can track it easier here. Again, this may differ by saw, but this is where I feel most comfortable cutting. I can see my cut line through this little window over the pommel, or I can lean my head over my right shoulder and sight down the far side of the blade. Both get more comfortable with practice. But the important thing to know here is that you have to keep eye contact with your cut line the entire time you're cutting. If you look away for an instant, things can go wrong. So know your sight windows in advance. And by the way, this little notch at the front is not accurate enough to guide precise cuts. You have to keep your eye where the blade meets the wood. Now, Starting the cut is one of the most difficult parts and easily the most important. If you don't start cutting straight, you won't be able to get on track. 
The cut will be messed up right away, so I spent a lot of my time on initial lineup. I set the front of my sole plate on the near edge of the board, and I bring the point of my blade tooth right up to my line. You want to try to split that pencil line in half with your cut. I then sight from the back of my saw and try to make sure that my blade is in line with the cut path. The straight line of the saw blade should look like an extension of the pencil line. This can be tricky, but you want to get as close as possible from the beginning. Now I grab the pommel and back the saw off just about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. You don't want the blade in contact with the board at startup. You just want it close. Also, make sure that the saw isn't angled upward. You don't want it hanging down at the back. You want it to slide flush onto the cut surface. All of these things can be micro-corrected as you're starting, and you'll have to do that. But getting them as close to perfect as you can from the beginning will make the cut that much easier and keep it clean. So with the blade near the board, I pull the trigger and let the saw spin all the way up to full speed. Then, slowly, I begin to drive forward. All I'm looking to do at first is make my blade tooth split the cut line in half on the side that I want the blade to cut. Notice that I might make small shifts here to get the notch to line up. This is the first tracking I do, and it's very, very crucial. Here, I've stopped the cut so you can see my first margin of error. This isn't perfect, but it's not that bad either. I've split my line, I'm on the appropriate side, and I'm not showing too much wobble. But I'm still not out of the woods. What I really want to focus on now is getting the full blade into the lumber on my cut line. Until the blade is all the way in, the cut will feel loose, like it wants to slide a little. This is normal. The blade still doesn't have much support from the wood itself, so you have to provide all that stability for the first about five or six inches. You can see me fighting here to keep it on track. This isn't clean. I do everything worse on camera, but I'm not making too much of a mess either. You don't want wiggle later on, but in the beginning, it's to be more expected. Also, if I'm going to back my saw up to readjust, it's mostly going to happen here in the beginning. I try not to overdo this because it can cause blowout and splintering, as you can see around the curve here. But small backups may be necessary now. So I'm tracking with my eye very, very closely and cutting slowly with both hands on the saw. The main reason for keeping my free hand on the pommel is to create enough steady forward pressure to lift the blade guard smoothly. This can sometimes jostle the cut early on, so you want to make sure to keep things stable until the guard is up. On square cuts, I'll usually let it lift itself. In other cases, I'll lift it by hand, but we'll get to that. Now, once you've driven in about six inches, things begin to change a little bit. They stabilize, and it gets easier to make the cut. Why does this happen? It's because circular saw blades inherently want to cut in a straight line. They don't want to deviate or waver. They just want to keep going straight forward. And this occurs because circular saw blades have a lot of surface area. Just look, you normally want your saw blade extending a quarter inch beyond your board. This means that all this blade above that point is basically trapped inside the board. When I hold some cut off scrap behind the exposed blade, you can see how much of that blade is encased within the walls of the cut. The saw blade creates its own path, or kerf. The blade itself is slightly narrower than the kerf because the blade teeth are wider than the body. But the point is, it's sitting in this little channel it's made, and it doesn't want to get out of that channel because the blade is rigid, and it's going to have to fight to create a new path. When you twist it, the blade is pushing out against the walls holding it in. The teeth have to dig at these surfaces and try to relieve pressure, and the tool doesn't want to do that. Skinnier blades, like jigsaws, can make tight curves because they don't have much surface area in the wood. But turning a circular saw blade in a cut is like trying to reverse a tractor trailer in a tight alley. The blade is just too long. The extra pressure on the blade bogs down the motor. It starts to whine and slow down, and you can feel the saw fighting you. There's too much resistance, and the saw will rip at the walls around it. Just look at the aftermath of a twisted cut. It's all blowout. But when the blade gets on a fixed course, it's going to want to stay on that fixed course all the way through the board because there's less resistance. That's the easiest path forward. This phenomenon is at the heart of freehand cutting. Because when you learn to line up early and start on the right track, it becomes immeasurably easier to stay on the right track. In fact, when I'm about a foot in, I'll often take my free hand off the pommel and place it on the board to make sure that it doesn't move because board movement is very dangerous. But here, with my blade on track, I can just watch it closely from behind and above and make those tiny micro corrections that are required to prevent it from going off track. At this point, I also really don't stop for much. You're locked in on the cut. As long as you can reach the full distance, you're better off going ahead and finishing it. When you stop and start cuts, it gives you a chance to get out of line again and you just sort of lose your equilibrium. 
but of course it happens sometimes. You might need to readjust because something's in the way or just because your arm's tired. So here are quick tips for doing it cleanly. The first is don't move the saw. Come to a stopping point, take your finger off the trigger and let it wind all the way down. Keep both hands on it until it's done and don't jostle it. A saw slowing down can kick very easily. When it's fully stopped, take your hands off without budging it and leave it exactly where it is. It's perfectly lined up in the kerf and one bump can lightly twist it. When it's time to cut again, carefully put your hands on the grip. And now before starting up, back it up just like a 16th of an inch, a tiny bit. You don't ever wanna start a saw up with any contact. Again, it can kick. Now firmly braced, hit the trigger and let it spin all the way up. Try to get the front tooth edge to hit the exact same cut line that it already made. You'll see it if it's slightly off. It'll look like a microscopic notch. That's not what you want. You wanna find and stay on your old cut line. Keep splitting that pencil mark in half. As the saw drives forward, you'll feel it stabilizing again from making contact with fresh wood. To finish the cut, pass the full length of the blade all the way through the board until it's out, then lift the saw away before the sole plate falls off the edge. It's easy to jostle here, especially if you're reaching. I jostled mine because I'm watching the camera and you can see it left a little notch on the end of the board. I try to avoid that by driving forward until I'm all the way clear. That's how you make a straight line cut freehand. Keep in mind, it'll never be completely perfect because of those tiny, tiny micro adjustments. Everything shows up on a board. The edge is very unforgiving. Look, my first cut here was really wavy. I made a second one which was better, but it still has tiny problem spots. This is why you don't want to cut freehand on projects where perfect lines matter, like a lot of cabinet stuff. You want to use a saw guide or a straight edge for those projects, and I'll do a whole video on that. But for shop grade stuff or some exterior things, this line is straight enough that people won't notice it. I cut much of the stuff around me in the shop freehand, and I often hide those rough cuts and blind joints so they're not as obvious. That's a little bit of strategy but those are the main techniques for cutting freehand. Use sharp pencil lines, start on track, and go slow until the blade is all the way in. Then always watch your cut line, let the saw stay on its straight course, and don't stop or readjust too much unless you have to. And here are a few other important things to consider. Don't back the saw up too much in the middle of a cut. People do this all the time. They start to get a little off course, then pull the saw back like an inch. This creates two big problems. One, because you got that far off course, you're gonna have a big notch at the front. But also, when you pulled it back so far, you created an opposite notch at the other end. Remember, the blade is a long straight line and it can cut at the front and at the back. Too much of this on a board just makes a horrible line. It looks like barbed wire. You'll get double bad cut marks if you pull the saw back a lot and tons of blowout. Instead, just take it slow. Only make tiny adjustments to keep the front of the blade on track. Also, in some instances, I will pull up the guard at the start of a cut to get it out of the way. This can vary by saw, but my Makita guard sometimes gets hung up on angle cuts. So before I start an angle cut, I reach back with my free hand, grab the guard handle and ease it up. I'll hold it here with my free hand, which is on the pommel. I keep it lifted until I'm all the way into the piece, then let it back down. This is obviously kind of a tricky move and it comes with some danger because it causes you to have a weird grip. But sometimes it's easier to do than forcing the guard up, which can cause the saw to tilt off track. If you do it, don't grab it when the saw is active. Do it before you start. Don't put your hand near the spinning blade. And again, not every saw does it the same way. This is a good reason to experiment with your saw on test pieces so you know its tendencies. And finally, as I've said in other videos, always know where your cord is. If you have a corded saw, as many people do, make sure it has plenty of slack and that it's in a good position. You don't want it getting caught on something and hanging up on your cut. I'll sometimes have to reach back carefully to pull it up around an obstruction. You may want to stop moving the saw to do this, but keep your eyes on the cut and let the saw wind down completely if you have to. All right, that's covering a lot of bases. Again, these tips do have to be coupled with practice and experience, but this might help a newcomer grasp the situation. And of course, always, always be careful when you're operating a circular saw. In the end, you're responsible for your own safety. I hope this video helps. Let me know what you thought of it down in the comments. And I'll link some saws and tools in the description below. Feel free to shop those links if you need anything. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon.
And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.